Ever since news broke out that Avatar The Last Airbender will be having a Netflix adaptation, many fans are looking forward to its development. Considering how the live adaptation movie failed years ago, this Netflix series seems to bring hope with its accurate casting. For today's video, we'll be sharing with you the latest news of Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender as it unites Katara and Aang in the new photos. Stay tuned to hear all about it. First up, ATLA fan Fans gush over the latest photos of Katara and Aang while waiting for updates on the series. Avatar The Last Airbender will not only be the subject of future animation projects from Avatar Studios, but also a live-action version from Netflix. With the streaming services production starting, two of the show's stars have posted photographs of Aang and Katara side-by-side, -side, preparing fans for the reenactment of the benders that sought to stop the Fire Nation's advance while forming some vital friendships along the way. Aang and Katara's relationship has been one of the most prominent in Avatar's The Last Airbender, with the two eventually marrying and having their children. With the release of the sequel series, The Legend of Korra fans were introduced to their offspring while also seeing an adult Katara continue to live after Aang's death. It would be interesting to see if the live-action adaption on Netflix becomes popular enough to merit the appearance of Korra in a live-action series on the streaming service as well. Kaiwen Tio Tarb Belle, who plays Katara, published a photo of herself and her co-star, Gordon Cormier, who plays Aang on her official Instagram account, giving fans a glimpse of the two actors together before we see them dressed as Aang and Katara, and wrote on the caption, ran into that avatar kid. He really likes hats for some reason. Cormier and Tarbell appear to have become friends during the filming of Avatar The Last Airbender, based on their social media posts. Cormier and Tarbell demonstrated their relationship in the comment section alongside the new photographs. I just love hats since it's so cold, Cormier answered Tarbell's post in the comment section, which displayed their light-hearted relationship. From what we heard, the live adaptation just wrapped up filming one of the big scenes in the movie. But what could we expect from this big scene? Recently, Paul Sung Hung Lee, the actor who will play Uncle Iroh in the upcoming live action adaptation of The Avatar, The Last Airbender, discussed how the series will approach its first season differently than the the animated version. After a hard day of filming the actors portraying Uncle Iroh and the Fire Lord Ozai, Paul Sun Hung Lee and Daniel Day Kim share a drink, and the members of the Fire Nation hint at a crucial scene that may not have occurred in the original series. Iroh and Ozai never fought in the original Avatar The Last Airbender series, with Iroh spending most of the season seeking his nephew, Prince Zuko. While Iroh was initially portrayed as a much more laid-back character in the Nickelodeon production's large ensemble, the fourth season offered him some important, hard-hitting moments when he was able to escape captivity and join the White Lotus to fight Ozai's final attack. Could the live-action adaptation provide viewers with a fight that was never shown in the original series? Or is this a retelling of Zuko's first banishment from the Fire Nation, as both Lee and Kim stated? The two actors remark on the big scene that they had allegedly filmed that day with actor Paul Sung Hung Lee sporting facial hair that clearly screamed screams Uncle Iroh when compared to the firebender who remains a fan favorite as captured by Twitter outlet Avatar News. While this adaptation is presently under production, no date has been set for its premiere on Netflix. The first season of the animated series, according to the actor, was oriented toward young children. But as the novels progressed, the topics grew much more mature. They still have that whimsical charm, but the concepts were much deeper, and the character arcs were much more mature. He stated that they are attempting to infuse those qualities into the first season. Avatar The Last Airbender follows Aang, the titular hero, as he learns to master all four elements and restore harmony to a world torn apart by the Fire Nation. Kiowin Tio Tarbell as Katara, Ian Ousley as Sokka, Dallas Louie as Prince Zuko, Paul Sung Hoang Lee as Iroh, Elizabeth Yu as Princess Azula, and Daniel Day Kim as Fire Lord Ozai round out the cast as Aang. Because of the critical praise that Avatar The Last Airbender received on its initial release, many people are concerned that Netflix's version would fall short. Despite the challenging burden of reinterpreting such well-known and adored characters, the cast of Avatar The Last Airbender seem to be enjoying themselves. As much as fans are happy about the casting, many more are sharing their thoughts online about how Aang's character could be improved by making him more like Korra. Avatar Korra, the eponymous character's successor, might help Netflix's live-action production of Avatar The Last Airbender, built on Aang's 
character. Aang is the joyful, compassionate, and naive protagonist of Avatar, The Last Airbender, a Nickelodeon original animated series. With the debut of The Legend of Korra, the show's sequel, it was evident that Korra, both the character and the show, had matured significantly from its predecessor. With Netflix's news that they will be filming a live-action adaptation of The Last Airbender, speculation instantly turned to how the original show's characters, stories, and tone would translate from animation to live action. Michael Dante DiMarantino and Brian Konetsko, the show's creators, will serve as showrunners in the hopes of avoiding Netflix's live action blunders like with Cowboy Bebop. Unfortunately, the two left the production due to creative differences, casting doubt on how faithful the adaptation would be to the original. Despite this, Netflix has the option to examine the original show's characters in a new light for a variety of reasons. One of such reasons is found in The Legend of Korra. Nickelodeon revived Korra with DiMarantino and Konetsko serving as showrunners and creators. While The Legend of Korra had a more mixed response from fans than The Last Airbender, there were ways for Netflix to benefit from the second series, particularly in regard to Aang's character. Fans claim that Aang's darker and heavier themes could be explored in a deeper sense, which could improve the show overall. Netflix's production of Avatar The Last Airbender allows for a much deeper exploration of Aang than was feasible on Nickelodeon. It's worth noting that Nickelodeon and the original program did go into some detail about Aang's horrific experiences. However, because the show's target audience was and continues to be young adults and children, several aspects could not be fully explored. The Legend of Korra, on the other hand, has a far more mature tone than The Last Airbender. While it still aired on Nickelodeon, it seems that the creators were given a greater leeway in terms of what they could portray to explore Korra's character's deeper themes than Aang's. Given the increased sexual and mature content that has been presented on Netflix over the years, this suggests that Netflix can do the same. The Last Airbender has the freedom to explore the darker themes of the original show in a manner that Nickelodeon, a channel aimed mainly at children, did not. Compared to Aang's, Korra's traumas were explored differently, which consisted of several arcs, which fans think the live adaptation should also use this too. Rather than long character arcs, The Last Airbender frequently focused on Aang's deep-seated difficulties in single episodes. Aang was a juvenile, too joyful character for the most part, especially in the first season of the show. The more adult themes of his character were mostly given one episode to bloom in this season. One of Aang's most horrific occurrences occurred in the season one episode, the Southern Air Temple. In this episode, Aang accepts the fact that he has been in cryosleep for 100 years and is the tribe's lone surviving member. Aang, Katara, and Sokka discover the body of monk Gaiatso, Aang's former airbending master and father figure, near the end of the episode. Due to his rage and grief, Aang enters the Avatar state, and the episode ends on a somber note. While this is undoubtedly one of Aang's most important aspects, even providing the show's title, it is rarely discussed on this level again. Similarly, Avatar Aang's remorse for leaving the Southern Air Temple and being encased in ice, allowing Fire Lord Zozin and the grandfather of Aang's nemesis, Fire Lord Ozai, to perpetrate genocide against the Air Nation and start the Hundred Year War, is explored in episode 12 of season 12, The Storm. The episode includes many flashbacks to Aang's upbringing, highlighting his reluctance to become the Avatar and the impact it had on his life. This one episode covers most of Aang's guilt and childhood suffering. A dimension of Aang's trauma is depicted across numerous episodes in the season 2 narrative, in which Aang's best friend and animal companion Appa is abducted, severely affecting his demeanor toward the conclusion of the season. While these are undoubtedly dark issues and far more sophisticated than typical children's shows, the way Katora's trauma was handled is far more natural and, if implemented, might enrich Aang's character in the live-action Netflix adaptation. With that, we're wrapping up today's episode about the latest photos released from Avatar The Last Airbender that unites Katara and Aang. Are you looking forward to the series? Let us know in the comment section below. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on for more videos like these. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.